Okay, so this was a theoretical part that justifies the EM algorithm. Let's see an actual example. So since most um, sources out there usually give the Gaussian mixture models, I decided to give the binomial mixture model. So suppose I have K bias coins with different probabilities, P1 to PK. Each coin has, yeah, a different probability of getting heads, yeah? So one coin could have 0.4, another coin could have 0.6, another coin could have 0.75, et cetera. And I choose a coin at random, and let's say it's completely at random, it's uniform. Note that usually we also assume that this is unknown and we want to um, estimate this, but for simplicity, let's assume that this mixture quantity is known and it's always uh, uniform. Okay, and then you choose one coin at random and then you toss it for m times and observe the result. So given that I know that the coin is the kth coin, then x, the result of the coin that I threw, distributes Bernoulli with the probability of that coin, yeah? And I repeat this process n times. Okay, so if I observe disease, I could easily compute the MLEs for the parameters, right? So suppose we have only two coins, then we have P0 and P1, or you could call it P1 and P2, yeah? But uh, Z will be then 0, 1. And then the joint, you could kind of represent it like this, yeah? The joint um, distribution. So we throw the coin M times, and then the probability for each time is a Bernoulli, but it's raised to the power of the Z. So if we chose the second coin, then Z will be one, and then this will be the probability of observing the heads or tails for the second coin, but this will be zero, so this term will get canceled. And if we choose the first coin, then this will be the probability of observing heads or tails for the first coin, and this will be one, uh, but this will be zero and it will be canceled. And you take the product of this for all the M coins we see, because each toss is uh, independent. And of course, you multiply this by half, which is the probability um, each time to get either the first or the second coin. Okay, and then if we want to expand this for our entire data, not for just one uh, toss, but we repeat this n times, then we have uh, from x11 to x and m, and then we just add another multiplication here for the each time that we do this. And the only thing that changes is that x now has also a substrate i and z also have a substrate i. Okay, and you can now compute the maximum likelihood estimator of P1 and P2. Uh, I'll leave this for, to you as an exercise. But um, of course, in reality, I don't observe the Z. I don't know which uh, coin was chosen. All I see is the results. So is all lost? No, we can also use EM. So remember, we are trying to calculate uh, this quantity over here. So let's look at the log of the joint. The log of the joint is just the log of this. Uh, the half is a normalizing constant. It doesn't depend on uh, theta, so we can just throw it out. And uh, the products become sums, and this is what we, this stays the same. And because we threw the constant, this is approximately this thing. Now the z's can come before the logs, yeah, because they're the exponents. We can break also the log to this thing. And then the Q is just the expected value of Z given X and PT. For short, I will just write E. And the only place we have Zs now are here and here. So the expectation is linear. And so it just goes. And uh, instead of the expectation of the entire thing, it just becomes the sum of the ex uh, individual expectations here and here. OK, so the only thing left to do is to calculate these expectations. Okay, so the expectation of Z, well, Z is in this case a Bernoulli uh, variable, right? Because we chose Z to be um, K to be two. So the expectation of Bernoulli is just the probability of the Bernoulli. Now we can use base formula and well, say ZI given XI is equal to XI given ZI times ZI uh, divided by the, um, 
probability of xi, which is just uh, the sum over zi of this expression over here. Okay, so we put zi equal one, and then we sum zi equal one plus zi equal zero, and this will be it. Okay, so what is this thing? And of course, p1, p1, and p0 are all equal to half, and so they cancel out, yeah? And we are only left with this divided by this plus this. Okay, so uh, what is this thing? Well, if zi is equal to one, it's just, we know we chose the second coin and then it's just this thing over here. Okay, and for numerical reason, we could also write this as, as an expectation of a log and then it will be equal to this expression over here. And in the same manner, uh, we can also calculate P of X given Zi equals zero, it's just will be the same, only instead of the second coin, we now have, we know that the first coin was chosen. So this was the probability. And so now we can calculate everything. We can have an expression of this, which only depends on the P's because we take the Z's to be given. And in the next step, in the M step, we are, calc we are maximizing this expression with regards to the P, our thetas, our parameters. So if we take this expression and then we uh, uh, differentiate it with regards to P1, then the second term here doesn't depend on P1, so all of this goes away. Yeah, and remember that the ZIs, they don't depend on P1 anymore because we already calculated them. They are given. We use the old PIs to calculate the expected value of the ZIs. Okay, so it's only the first term and using differentiations law, we get this thing. And then solving this, we get that P1 is equal to this expression over here and P2 is equal to this expression over here. And also know that since our formulas only have the sum of X, I, J, yeah, so notice here, yeah, we don't really need the individual X, I, J, we just use the sum of X, I, J uh, and here over M. Yeah, over the j's. And also here we all only have the sum of xij. Then we could have adjusted these formulas where we only look at xi's, which are the sum of xij's. Yeah, we could also look at just as xi is the sum of uh, xij j equal one to m. And this will be a binomial, yeah, with um, m and p1 or p2. Yeah. But for simplicity, we'll just I'll just leave it like this. Okay, so let's switch into R and let's see this in action. So suppose in the 2D case where we, when we only have k equal two, we only have to choose between two coins and we have two probabilities uh, randomly taken for these uh, two points. One is 0 0.91 and one is 0 0.59. And suppose N is 1000 and M the number of repeated measure each time is 10. Then we have some latent variables. And here we say we sample them with a uniform distribution. So since here we only get a 0, 1, then both values have the probability of 0 0.5. And now we create our x's. And that's it. We created our data set. We have the x's now. Now, this, all this was to create the x. But in reality, if you get the data, you won't see z. Yeah, the only thing you will see is the x. We, we, in order to create X, I actually had to have some Z's, have some latent variables, but from now on, we can delete Z, yeah? We don't have Z anymore. Okay, so the E step just calculates the formulas that I've shown you before, and for numerical reason, I use X of log, um, and then, yeah, it's exactly like the formula that I saw, that I showed you. The M step uh, calculates the, uh, at new estimators with the formulas from before. Yeah, so we have the sum of E times Xi divided by M times the sum of EI. Okay, and then the EM algorithm, what I do here is I give it some maximum iteration. I give it the minimum tolerance. If it goes below the, that tolerance, it breaks before the maximum iteration. And then the only thing it does, it does the iterative uh, method. It first calculates the E step, then calculates the M step. And that's it. So let's start with some let's start with some random values of uh, p's. Okay, so the random values we start are 0 0.543 and 0 0.202, and then we starting from this, it will uh, do the EM. 
Okay, and we can see that after 17 iterations, it got to these, uh, I'm sorry, these are the true values of the P's, and these are the uh, values that were given from the EM. And notice that this is exact, very close to this, and this is very close to this. And also notice that the order is different. The EM doesn't know the order. Yeah, it doesn't know the order. It will give you the result, but not in the order that, uh, that you had. Okay, so this was the 2D case, but what if we have K coins? Then here we could um, encode Z as a one hot vector, which either takes uh, one in the first place, one in the second place, et cetera, et cetera, until one in the last place. And now the formulas from before stays the same, only uh, you have ZI one uh, all the way until ZI K, capital K. And so we could, basically collapse it into another product, the product over K. Okay, so this is our new joint. Then Q becomes the same thing, only with the expected value of this. And then uh, if you calculate the expected value, it's still, since the I is a categorical, it's a categorical variable now, then the expected value of categorical is still just the probability of it. And using base rule, it's still equal to this thing. And then you can calculate these things um, again. Yeah, so here it will just be um, the same thing as before, only now you have to calculate it for each uh, K. Okay, so for each one, you have to calculate it. It's, you don't ha only have two, you have K of those. Okay, okay, now you differentiate with regards to the PK and notice that the sum. Uh, for each n and for each m, you, uh, you have a sum over k, but when you differentiate with regards to some, let's say, p1, then all the other p's, they, they go away. So the sum over k cancels and you're only left with the differentiation with regards to p1, for example. But this is exactly like before. This is exactly like uh, the differentiation before. And you get this thing over here and uh, eventually you get to the pk. And notice that... Uh, Something that kind of confused me was that I thought, wait, shouldn't this be a constraint optimization because shouldn't the sum of the p's be equal to one? Well, no, the sum of the p's are not equal to one. It's different distribution for different p's, right? So um, you could have three coins and each of them have the probability of half. So the sum of the p's is one and a half. It's not equal to, um, to one or you could have three coins and each of them have a probability of 0.1 of heads, then the sum of the p's is 0.3. Okay, and for the general case, now in the code, I have to use the library extra distribution for the categorical distribution. If I choose k equal to five, and I, uh, in order for simplicity, I'm going to put the, the probabilities of each coin to be uh, equally separated from each other, yeah? So P now has uh, um, one sixth, one uh, third, half, two thirds, and uh, five sixths. Okay, and another thing I do is I increase M from 10 to 100. This is in order to increase the accuracy of the algorithm because as you increase K, it's becoming harder and harder for the algorithm, for the EM algorithm to distinguish between the coins, right? Because if you have a coin which is 0 0.5 and another coin which is 0 0.51, then it will be very hard for the algorithm to um, distinguish between the different coins. And so you have to increase the, um, your data. So you have to increase your N and your M. So for five, this is okay. For 10, I would maybe increase it a bit more. I don't know. Okay, now I create the latent variable Z. I create the observed variable, the data. Yeah, and the E step is pretty similar to before, only the, now I have to normalize it. I added another loop for the case. I compute the EI for each K and then I normalize it. Okay, so this is E. The M step is also kind of similar. I use the row sums and call sums. The row sums is the sum of the XI's over all the J's. So it's the same. I could have used it also before. Here I use call sums because E now will be a matrix of I n times K, yeah? The, the, the observations n times K because we have different Ks for each um, observation. 
and this is the code that does it. The EM algorithm stays exactly the same. I uh, generate some initial guess for the P's. I run the EM algorithm. You see that 33 iterations is enough. And this is the real P and this is the final P. And you can see that we get it pretty close. Yeah, 0 0.33, 0 0.39, 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.49, 0 0.66, 0 0.67, 0 0.83, 0 0.82. Okay, so the order is not guaranteed to be the same, but the values will be the same. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one.